Hello, my name is Anthony Shivkumar, and in today's video, I'm going to talk about how to design a free RTOS um, task manager for my flight controller. So in today's video, uh, this is the robot that I want to basically um, design. This is a high level, you know, conceptual model of a bicopter in this particular case. And I'm still coming up with the design and the process of it. But in the, but in a nutshell, I still need to design my flight controller in terms of, you know, how I would want my uh, system to, you know, uh, control the motors, how it can, you know, get information from the IMU sensors and apply some control system algorithms and stabilize the quadcopter and all those cool little stuff or the, the intricate parts of what makes uh, the uh, flying machine, you know, stable. And that's what we're going to talk about, how we're going to design the operating system and the code and how we're going to organize that code to make all of this work. In the previous video, I spoke about how my uh, quadcopter in this particular case, but I'm constantly thinking about how the design is going to be. Uh, I spoke about how I'm going to basically divide, divide the architecture. So I'm going to have one for flight control and one is for computer vision and AI processing. So this mostly is going to be running on embedded, uh, embedded Linux. And this I plan to use free RTOS uh, for my flight controller. And today's video, I'm going to talk about this part of the uh, of the flight controller, how I'm going to design the software and how the software is going to fit in so that, you know, it's working in a way that is um, that is that has some form of multi uh, multi what do you say context switching in terms of, you know, doing things in parallel and having a real time operating system to dig deeper into how I plan to design the system. So the architecture is going to be in a way that so what what is what what encompasses the flight controller at least in this particular case uh I want my flight controller to talk to a radio signal which in which you know can be uh get get information from um from a joystick or from a from a handle controller or from a user input or um or it might want to transmit data you know the in terms of you know the you want to keep track of, you know, the stability analysis so that in case if something happens on the field, you know, we can get that data and then make troubleshoot what's happening on the quadcopter. Uh, you also want to, so that would be a different process and a different task in my, uh, in the way I would design it. And the reason being is uh, it's kind of, a, it's, 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 it's a little low priority task um, compared to say, if the drone is flying, I think the, the higher priority is, you know, do not crash, you know, be stable, do not be unstable. You, we can have a little bit of delay in terms of, you know, receiving signal and sending data back because the higher priority would probably, will have, will not, will have to be, you know, not to crash. So the things, that, and then, so that would be its own, you know, process by itself. And, you know, it, it, it would be a low priority process. At least that's the way I would design it. Another, when I say task over here in the free RTOS world, Task is basically, you can think of it like a thread in the Linux system. Uh, it has its own, uh, you know, um, it's it, it's basically uh, running in parallel. It's it's uh, it's running in a, a software parallel. It's not a hardware parallel thing uh, in terms of, you know, you can run all of these things together and it's constantly context switching. So it's more like a thread, but they still share the same memory because it's uh, that's how FreeRTOS works. So you can think of this as one task, this is a second task, and this is a third task. So the second task uh, or a different thread in this, you know, depending on your on, on how you want to call it, but in free RTOs, we call them tasks. You want this to just be controlling the motor because motor control is actually very sophisticated in just terms of just the computation and algorithms. And all of this is going to be controlled most likely through one process, at least the way I'm designing it. And the motor controller will have to control either four, will be controlling four motors no matter what. So if it's a bicopter, it'll be controlling two brushless DC motor, maybe two gimbal motors, which gimbal is also a type of brushless DC motor, but one is mostly focused on speed, whereas one is mostly focused on position control. And that's still, a, you know, a, a, a very complex algorithm, um, especially for brushless DC motor, you're going to, you know, basically take the back EMF, this will be sensorless motors, take the back EMF, and from there, compute the speed of the motor, uh, and then accordingly, you know, uh, send the necessary adjust the pulse width modulation so that you know you can increase or decrease the speed based on the feedback you're getting. And similarly, for position control, you would have some form of sensor in there to understand what the position is. So that that's the feedback control. So, and if it's a and if it's a quadcopter, you would have four brushless DC motors. So, um, and you'll be only mostly controlling speed. Uh, whereas if you have a gimbal motor, then you'll be you know controlling the um, the position as well. So you'd want to have that as a complete, as a different um, thread uh, in this particular case, a different task, because uh, you want that to, you know, 
um, in this particular case, the speed of the motor is a very important, um, is a computationally intensive thing, and it just needs to be, you know, in another in another task and all by itself. And the third task of the free RTOs that I plan to, you know, the way I plan to design is just purely on the control algorithm. And what would this do? This would, you know, take all the readings from the sensors that are there on board, like the IMU sensor, you know, the gyroscope, the accelerometer, and then do some sensor fusion algorithm, like the Kalman filter or complementary filter. And then from there, feed that into a control system algorithm that can, you know, have things like PID control or model predictive control um, with other, with other, with, with other control systems, um, uh, things like robust control in order to you know make it most uh, reliant reliant for, from from disturbance and do all those kind of computation in a different thread now one might say uh, why don't you know have you know the motor control and the flight control in a different uh, in a different thread uh, in the same thread uh, i don't think that i would design it that way because they both are very computationally intensive but one has a little different priority than the other uh, you would still want to put the motor controller at a higher priority than the than the flight controller, because the motor controller is literally controlling the outside world, whereas the flight controller is uh, is trying to compute the best estimates for stability. And you know it can be you know a, a few milliseconds or maybe even a few few milliseconds here and there is is fine. Whereas you know for a motor controller, um, if it doesn't send the right PWM signal. Um, um, or if the motor stops spinning when it's supposed to be spinning, you know, be, they, they, that'll, that'll be a big problem and we want to avoid that. So in this particular case, I would have my motor control as a different, um, in, in a different, um, in a different task, uh, as a different task and a control system as a different task. But the control system will be interfacing with the IMU will be in the same task because they all are kind of integrated together. Um, they, then, and, and they, and, and especially if you're doing something like a Kalman filter and, or, a, or, or a complementary filter, the data, uh, you want to get the data as quick. You're, you're computing with the instantaneous data. So they kind of work hand in hand. So that's the high level nutshell of how I plan to use or design my system. It's a very, um, it's still in a, it's still in the design phase stage right now, uh, but I've already started to fabricate the hardware in terms of the PCB, in terms of certain components, and I'm trying to you know figure out how I'm going to you know design the software for it and layer by layer you know make it work. So if you've seen the previous previous video on my on my ARM development, I basically I created a custom folder, and this is how I'm basically going to organize my code as well. Uh, so if you want to just you know recap on what we did in the previous video. So in my previous video, I did speak a little bit about the folder structure and the arm uh, and the way I want to make my uh, arms arm work. Uh, so in this particular case, I have my folder structure. If you go, you know, to CD to source, uh, you, we will have um, the different algorithms that will be sitting over here. Sensor fusion, um, motor controller, uh, the flight controller and the control systems algorithm. And uh, when it goes to more target specific, um, then so I will be designing the high level functions in these in these uh, in these in these folders. But when I go to the target, and I go to say an XP in this particular case, uh, I'll be using the KV five X, which is the Canadas five X five X, which has the capability of controlling all four motors and as the cap it's a Cortex M seven processor, um, if I'm not mistaken. And you know it's it's capable of you know controlling alpha motors and doing flight controller and having a small little operating system like a free RTO to so do a little bit of the context switching. So it is a capable processor. So in here, which is a very target specific code, here I'll be right. I'll be incorporating all the um, all the tasks and all the all the all the task uh, and 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 the tasks in this particular folder will then be calling the free RTO. So uh, library and then the free RTOs library will be calling you know the flight controller and the control system so the VSO I have the RTOs section over here which will have all the free RTOs library and then from here we'll have in here we'll also have a free RTOs very specific to this processor though I don't necessarily I don't know how that works yet um, I, I believe most of the free RTOs code should be common to all processors and there will be very some very specific both support packages so the free RTOs like you know BSP both support packages uh, will be will be pos will be uh, located in this particular folder, um, and yeah. So in the next few videos, and hopefully in the next month or so, you know, we'll have something working with all the code, uh, controlling the motor, and you know, and just testing it out and seeing you know how it works. Uh, it's going to be a very basic prototype, but I'm so excited, you know, to really uh, share my progress as well as uh, you know, video blog every single aspect of the way I'm you know going about doing this. 
uh, and uh, if this is uh, interesting and you know fascinating uh, do like this video do subscribe you know it really supports me uh, it's a very um, it's an endeavor and I'm, and I'm approaching it in a very different way it's not you know something where you know I just go and buy these components and make it work uh, it doesn't fit the way I want to you know develop certain things uh, it, it's just good you know to really uh, understand the system at a deeper level so in the long run it, 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 there's, there's no gaps in the knowledge uh, and most importantly, if there's anything wrong, especially, you know, the customer is using it and if there's something wrong, you know, we have the capability of, you know, troubleshooting and making sense of, you know, where, what the, where, where things are going wrong because we're building everything from the grounds up. And we're not using algorithms that someone else created. We're using the algorithms that we are creating in-house. Um, and none of this is new. It's just a matter of, you know, understanding what, what we're using and all the cool stuff in here. Um, so please like the video, do subscribe and, you know, and comment below, you know, if you have a different way of, you know, use and of organizing your free RTOs for a flight control algorithm, or if you know of a novel way of doing certain things, do, do share your, do share your thoughts. And, you know, I would be interested in knowing, uh, how you would go about doing it. Uh, and until next time, take care.